Hello viewers, I'm SB and welcome back to Total War Warhammer 2, The Warden and the Paunch. I want to talk about our overall position here, a little bit real quick. It feels like we've spent, at this point, like easily the majority of the campaign, sort of fighting the Reichlanders over the same handful of settlements over and over again. Um, and I just want to take a moment here to underline that I think we're making good progress. Uh, it doesn't look like our borders are expanding very much. We're not we're not getting a lot of new territory. We're certainly not making the enemy take any permanent losses due to the way the reinforcements work and the fact that characters can never be meaningfully taken off the battlefield. But we've really burned down their resources. It's important to remember that while we are squabbling over the same things over and over again, they are now showing as much, much less powerful than they were when we started fighting them. They have a ton more enemies because we've managed to weaken them enough that everybody feels they can get in on it. And I really think that sometime soon, we're going to start seeing them, um, especially as chaos moves in, we're going to start seeing them uh, suffer losses up here that they don't have the ability to retake cleanly. They are only one strength rank ahead of, ahead of us, and that's at a moment of relative strength for them and a moment of relative weakness for us, where we don't even have three full armies and we don't have our WOG forces up. So this is good. We're doing well. Uh, that said, there is one other person that we have to care a lot about who is not doing so well. I spent a little bit of time looking over the whole situation. Uh, unfortunately, Grimgore is at war with Clan Moors. I'm fairly sure that if we don't confederate him now, there's a real good chance he's going to get just completely murdered out of the game uh, really, really soon. He is surrounded by what we must assume is hostile territory. Uh, and also somehow... What? Somehow the Sartosans hold Black Crag? That's... Okay, one problem at a time. How did you... Grimgore, what have you been doing? <laughs> How did you let the pirates of Sartosa, who start over here somewhere... Where the, where the hell is Sartosa? Sartosa is... Uh, this is Sartosa. How did that even... Ha okay. He's incompetent, is what happened. Yeah, we need to we need to take over leadership here. Interesting. When I saved, Confederation was green. Now it is merely yellow. I wonder why... I wonder why that changed. Well, like, would you would you do it? Okay. Yeah, we kind of need that to happen. If, if we want to have access to Grimgor himself, we need to do that now. So, big downside... Uh, oh, maybe not. Okay, with most factions, when you do a confederation, there's an eight-point public order penalty that you take for, like, five turns, and it can be really devastating sometimes. It looks like orcs just don't have that problem. Okay, cool. That's actually, that's phenomenal. So what did we pick up? Obviously, it's not been good for our, yeah, it's not been good for our overall money, because they're running three armies to contain a total of ten real units. Okay, well, first of all, Gosbeg Crooked, get out of here. We're going to disband this whole army. That's not even a thinker. Uh, Rarthug Foe Spike? No, absolutely not. But one thing we do have access to over here is Wurzag the Great Green Prophet. So this guy, is a uh, he's a legendary lord from a different greenskin faction, who I guess Grimgore confederated in before things went totally sideways for him. Uh, Wurzag is cool. Wurzag is actually the, first, the very first character... Uh, the very first Legendary Lord that we played as in the very first time that I played uh, this game on the channel. And wow, they've built him so badly. What on earth is this? So here's a problem with uh, taking on lords that have been controlled by the AI for a while. What the hell is this? Where's Egg's a caster? They've not put a single point into his casting line, nor into his unique strengths line. They got goblin buffs and buffs for trolls and giants. And then they took all the points in Looter and all the points in Ravager without bothering to come over here and grab, like, any of the other things. Okay. Well, they have probably spent... What is Bellower? Bellower is kind of whatever. His mount is a good thing. But aside from that, they've probably spent their points almost as poorly as they could possibly uh, have done. That said, Warzag is still cool and powerful. Uh, you can see his whole thing is very Savage Orc-based. Which is a shame, because we are not in any of the areas, even with our new territory here, we are not in any of the areas that you can recruit Savage Orcs from. Uh, if we take a quick look at the map, and we scroll down here, you'll see... Oh no, we don't actually have vision of any of the stuff. That's a little weird. When you confederate a, um, a faction, it should probably uh, take all of the map knowledge they had and add it to your maps, don't you think? 
Uh, anyway, down here, some of the settlements have a little marker on them that says, you can recruit savage orcs in this place. Um, so we're probably not going to be able, able to make great use of him just yet, but hopefully we'll be able to solve that problem. Um, and he already has his two legendary items, so this is just extra power reserves and a little bit of physical resistance. This is an upkeep reduction for his whole army, and it gives him the the Vindictive Glare spell from the Goblin Wog school while he is himself of the Orc Wog school, so like Foot of Gork and stuff. Uh, and then in his yellow line, more big buffs for Savage Orcs and Savage Orc Cavalry. Enables magical attacks on the whole army. Actually kind of interesting. Really bad if there's still dwarves around because it makes all of your... It makes the dwarves have extra damage resistance against all of your attacks. Oh, except that it strips enemies of any magic resistance they may have, which I think is new. I believe it didn't used to do that. I'm used to it being kind of iffy because it only did the top thing. Uh, big speed and melee defense and uh, perfect vigor for himself. Physical resistance, 20% for all of the big units, and 5% for everything. That's a really great skill. And then, ah, uh, a dramatic reduction in the cost of Foot of Gork, so you could just stomp people. That's actually super cool and very in flavor. It's like he can make Gork dance, because his whole thing is about dancing, as you may have noticed. Uh, yeah, that's really neat. He's going to develop into something really cool. He still has one legendary item that he can't get until... Level 18. Okay, so next time we level him up, he'll get that uh, that quest. And then Grimgore is nowhere to be found. Is Grimgore injured? He is, in fact, injured. He'll be available next turn, and we're not allowed to look at his stuff until, until then. But he's a pretty good combat hero. He should be very helpful. I think we might, for the moment, just disband Wurzag's army. I think we... I mean, we could try to train up an army and send them over here and have them take Mount Gunbad and then and then wrap around to the current conflict but hey, we're already in the negative without him having any units so if we if we buff these guys up in number I think that's a bad idea I'm just going to disband this army for right now we'll figure your whole thing out later uh I have to replace him with a different lord and then disband that lord to disband the army, which is a real dumb way for that to uh, for that to be. Okay, the pillars are for some reason not built at all, but Karaza Karak is like totally maxed out, which is lovely. Twelve hundred gold per turn. Well, yeah, this is this is good news. He's got some decent recruitment stuff going. Uh, no war machines, but he does have the troll and giant building. Okay, you know what? I think we can probably just leave this province as it is. We'll build up some stuff at the at the pillars of Grungni and. Yeah, not bad. So we are not at war with Clan Moors. Are we likely to be able to prevent ourselves from going to war with Clan Moors? We can maybe give them some gold and try to chill them out. Here's the thing. What we really what we really need is a, a non-aggression pact. I'm going to offer them a really silly amount of money. Uh, let's say, I don't know. Yeah, basically everything. Okay, still low. So there's no, there's no universe where the non-aggression pact could happen. That's definitely a concern. Hopefully we'll be able to, you know, continue accumulating reputation from fighting the Empire and, and make that happen. So here we have Sertosans. I mean, all of this empty territory probably belongs to Clan Moors. Let's, let's move our new scout up through here. Okay, so we have... This is a Skaven clan I'm not familiar with, Clan Ferric. They don't want to deal with me, and they don't have any particular friends. Okay, they're just kind of a bunch of nobodies. I guess I'm not too worried about that. Uh, and also, a full Clan Moors army right next to Grenstadt. That's probably good news for us. So like, like I was saying, uh, we're going to start seeing a lot of forces tearing at the edges of the Empire, and hopefully that's going to be really distracting to them. We have an army from Clan Mulder all the way down here for some reason. I don't... <laughs> I'm going to level with you. I have no idea what Clan Mulder is doing anywhere ever. Uh, here in Jufbar, let's definitely build that up. And then, oh, I did I did go through and um, fix everybody's equipment and, and followers and stuff. So as of the beginning of next turn, we'll be in a much better position on all that stuff. All right. So Karl Franz has taken Eschen. Volkmar the Grim is just hanging out in the middle of Vampire Town, feeling sick on account of Vampire... He's got the Vampire Flu. It happens. We have an issue up here with Wolfram Dreetsman. 
That's uh, like just a problem we don't have. Oh, this is nice too. Uh, is Clan Mulder at war with the Empire? Can we can we make that happen? Would you join my war against? No, this is not going to work. There's no way we're going to be able to pay them into that. They're so much weaker. Well, it's fine. He's still running around raiding, making life difficult. Um. So yeah, the the Wolfram Treatsman problem is fairly serious. We don't really have the ability to have anybody turn around and deal with it now. So I, I we have to commit these two to de to defense. And in fact, can we? How close can we get to Ashen? You can get pretty close. Oh, you can actually attack. Okay, well, let's do that then. We can get into reinforcement position without even having to march. So we can come at this fresh and just 40 stack the dude. Which should be a pretty easy win. Yeah, that's easy enough. We'll crush him. We'll loot and occupy for the 5% replenishment. Stole a sword. Uh, this is a... Okay, this is a big buff to the damage of the wielder. I mean, that seems fine. Giant Blade. Uh, significantly better. 10 bonus versus infantry is, is exciting, actually. Uh, let's... What sword did I give you? Hmm. I actually might want him to stick with the Sword of Bloodshed. I mean, obviously, this weapon's considerably better against large targets, which his army is okay against already, I guess. You're using Masamundus' Pride, and at some point, perhaps, we'll actually get your legendary... <laughs> Uh, you know what, I was going to pass him a a sword of anti-heroes, but I think I would rather have him use the giant blade. He's already specialized such that we want him to be charging into infantry, so that, I think that makes a lot of sense. And then uh, I would rather you have one of these two swords of anti-heroes now than that fencer's blade. Okay. And then, is Oglock actually... He's just outside of reinforcement range. Let's make sure that he's... Yeah, okay. If Volkmar wants to do this, he's going to have to go big. My guess is he'll run away. I don't, I don't think he's going to believe he can handle this. And Gouger somehow can't quite reach... Well, I, okay, I need you to get across the river. Somebody's got to be on the other side of that river. And Nubzub... Nubzub can run out here and... Yeah, just... Just do stuff to get XP. Are you serious? Did he critically fail again? <laughs> he, he had been, Okay. No, it's fine. It's fine. There's nothing we can do about it. It's fine. Uh, you also need to just keep doing things to get XP. Now I'm all gun shy. Like, the, the fact is, we're going to have pretty low success chances, and we just have to take those and win or lose, get XP, and eventually level up. It's the only way to get the numbers up. All right, see, he hit a success, got himself a couple of skill points. Let's make him better at assaulting garrisons and also units. What do you want? So we picked up a couple of scouts here uh, as we as we picked up a new faction. That's pretty useful. They're not all in the most ideal places, but I definitely want to try to get these guys up to a spot that matters. Uh, we're still not in position to spend scrap on any of this garbage. These armies, these armies should max out... So we're at 156. We don't quite have enough to take the upgrades on both of the remaining units in this army. Uh, longer weapons versus scrap barding. I don't think 8 points of melee defense on this guy is going to be all that relevant. And this army is not, like, totally ideal. Oh no, this army's pretty good anti-large, actually. So scrap barding would take him from 38 defense to 46. Yeah, okay, we'll take that. This, These two are the armies that don't really need so much help against large. That's right. Uh, we can definitely repair... Well, I mean, we should repair Eshin for sure. Waldenhof might just fall again. I mean, I should be so lucky, <laughs> right, that he rides out here and just kills... I'm going to go ahead and hit the repair. Because, like, that that's a win-win, right? Either, either we actually get that thing repaired, or we don't get it repaired because Volkmar ran over there, and then we devour him on our turn. All right, so we got five... Fightiness out of the battle there. We got five reputations. So we're at 25 exactly. So at the beginning of next turn, we'll be up in this tier then. It'll help. We're definitely gonna have a we're gonna have a rough turn or two here as we get back up to the higher parts of the the wogometer. Because right now our um, our public order, our, our obedience rather, is gonna be a little bit of a nightmare situation. Alright, Clan Moors, tell me. Yeah, that's what I want to see. 
Focus on our mutual enemy instead of your instead of your growing hatred of me. So that's going to be tough for Reichland. They're going to have to start paying attention to their northern border because of the uh, the uh, Norskin army that we saw up there, and also their southern border because of the Skaven that are now running uh, running loose. And the Warriors of Chaos are about to be no longer my problem. So this is all going to get really, really good for us. We've created a moment of weakness for Reichland at probably the moment when they can least afford to be weak. We have other problems, obviously. There's still Clan Mulder doing Clan Mulder stuff. We still have the issue of the uh, the Dwarves of Jufbar. Wolf from Dreetsman just ran over there and killed a rat army for some reason. Those, uh, those rebels. Rebel, the rebel armies are way more aggressive than they used to be. Alright, so if we were going to start up a new army, I think that probably Grimgore is the priority for that, uh, for, the, for that lordship. But I don't know that that's a thing we want to do right this second. Uh, I mean, maybe... Recruitment costs will continue to fall as we as our uh, reputation grows, which makes sense. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe. We'll see. Uh, Castle Drakenhof definitely needs to take some upgrades. It's actually not a huge priority to upgrade the boss's tent. Uh, wait, right. We have the gold mine going already. Let's... Honestly, Raiden Stash is probably fairly relevant here. It's not going to be... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be optimistic here and say it's not going to be that long before Castle Drakenhof's not really near our foes anymore. And so I'm not going to stress too much about having upgrades or having uh, recruitment structures here. Let's get some Raiden Stashes going. I guess we may as well upgrade this. We have money. And then if we were going to put in a recruitment building, it would be Black Orcs, maybe? And this gives us a... You know what? This gives us a bunch of Untainted, which is actually useful here. Uh, because this area is always going to have a little bit of a vampire corruption problem, because you can see there, there are three points of permanent vampire corruption from the fact that all the people who live here are undead. Uh, and then, obviously, Eshin is the safer upgrade here. Oh, I guess we have enough population to do both. Yeah, let's do both. Again, it would be really great for us if Volkmar would come out and attempt to claim Valdenhof. So Castle Templehof has a pretty big garrison. I don't know that we want to try to ride on him while he's in there. I don't... You may have noticed by now. I don't much like fighting fair. I feel like it's a really it's a really good way to lose a bunch of stuff. So let's see. You could ride in there and just be an annoyance. Man, has he ever successfully blocked an army? Has that worked even a single time? Uh, have you? Yeah, you're the nasty skulker. That's right. So you're not ready to go yet for one more turn. And I think we might just want to, um, we probably have to have one of these two two armies run northward. Is Volkmar's army particularly vulnerable to, to ambush? Yeah, by a good army, yes. So it might be wise to have, maybe we have Oglock wait in ambush mode here. Who would it be? Because like this army's still a little torn up, is my concern. But I kind of want one of them to ambush outside of Eshin and the other one to run toward the Rebellion. Because we got to put that Rebellion down. Otsag's army is more powerful. So we should give them the harder job. You guys get on this. That Rebellion should be easy enough to get rid of. And we'll just have Azhag try for the ambush. Boy. I don't love it. I really wish we had hit that, um, that block army. I wish any of my any of my various plots and schemes worked. Uh, Cause I don't really like the one on one. I might even just fall back. Unwise. If he wants to move into Eshin, uh, we'll finish Wazhumpa's recruitment, and then Wazhumpa can can sprint out to reinforce, and Azhag can actually start the battle. That might that might end up being best for us. Because I, I just don't I don't want to fight uh, in a way that's even remotely fair. It feels like a very stupid thing to do. I'm going to go to right here and be stealthy. We'll see if he uh, we'll see if he falls for the bait that is Eshin. 
And you should assault his units? 22%. I mean, you still get XP when you fail at stuff. You just, you just gotta get you gotta get those numbers up somehow. Uh, and you, I definitely want you running around like up here. We gotta get an idea of what their supply line of new armies coming in looks like. And you're very, very slowly on your way over. I'm actually gonna have him move through the mountains on the way up, just so that we can get an accurate uh, idea of what's happening around Mount Gunbad and Grand Peak. And we're gonna apply the final upgrade here. So your weapon strength or bonus versus infantry. We probably don't. Honestly, the weapon strength is probably overkill. And so's the so's the bonus versus infantry. They're both yeah. They're both they're both unnecessary. They're both just funny. Um, Essen should get maxed. Yeah, let's, let's work on building up some defenses here. I know how this keeps going, but we're just going to keep trying. And yeah, we've managed to burn an awful lot of money very, very quickly. We have good income, though. Alright, come on. Please tell me Volkmar the Grim gets distracted by all the other stuff that's going around, going on around him, and he just goes west. Like, if Clan Moors runs that army out and takes another settlement, you gotta imagine... Ah, uh, doesn't look like he's doing it, though. Um, you gotta imagine the, the Reichland AI is starting to pay attention to other things that are happening elsewhere, right? Something elsewhere? Anywhere? Well, our ambush is foiled. We're far enough away from him that if he runs up to attack us and we fall back, we should get away. But also, I don't know that he will. I think this the fight between our army and his army, yeah, it's too close. He doesn't he doesn't even want to engage in that. The Worldwalkers and Clan Molder have negotiated a proper alliance. That's interesting. Clan Molder might um they might be an awkward friend that we have to put up with for the rest of the campaign rather than actually killing them. Cause I don't really want to go to war with the Worldwalkers. I mean that's a that's a distant concern. Boy, I sure wish Vashnar Painbringer was interested at all in getting the hell out of my territory. So, I'm noticing that there is a great big... Oh, we're going to have a rebellion soon. That's not a big deal. We're close to that. Uh, there's a great big Dark Elf army massing up at the Bay of Blades. They're not actually at war with Reichland. But they are much more powerful than Reichland. So I wonder if we can do something about that. Would you join my war? Oh, moderate. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna offer them all of our money. Would you join my war in exchange for 100% of my orc bucks? Uh, these are teeth. That is our that is our whole economy runs on teeth. But they're nice teeth. You can probably you can melt them down and use them for something. Ah, that's a shame. Because if we could get the dark elves in on this, that would be the almost certainly that would be the last straw, right? Well, I mean, we're somewhat dependent on the Chaos Forces actually, like, moving in to do combat. Also, man, look at this thing where, like, our armies move a reasonable distance. That's lovely. Yeah, I'm just gonna... I'm just gonna sprint up. And... do this thing. Alright, the garrison leads the attack. Yeah, this, <laughs> this whole army is basic spearmen. Easy enough. Uh, we will ransom them, unfortunately, despite that being a huge number of dudes. With them being such low-tech dudes, we don't really get any money out of it. Uh, and then you can finish this. Okay, that's all of your all of your magic stuff. Congratulations, you're the greatest shaman who has ever lived. Not greater than the other shamans. You are equivalent to many other great shamans of history. Uh, and then I guess Oglock just turns right back around, right? Uh, let's get this built up. That would be lovely to actually finish. And one of those. And then does Zavastra... I'm going to also build a boss tent here. Let's just try to get our public order looking positive in a bunch of places. Uh, trying to select Mordheim. Mordheim definitely needs to start building a defensive structure. Okay, we're doing all right on money. Oh, you know what I'm just realizing? I didn't look at my, um, okay. All right, so we did get different units. 
it's possible that we got these units because the campaign has progressed, right? It, like, these are the units you get at the beginning, and then you get these ones later, and these ones even later. Or it might be the case that we got these because we took somebody on who was in the middle tier of the, the trophy strength, and you only get these ones for taking on people who are at the top. Uh, but so what did we get? We got a wyvern, which I'm very excited about. Terror causing, armor piercing melee. It's important to note 46 attack, 28 defense. Not actually that good of a fighter, but an 80 point charge bonus. And obviously flight is a big deal. Uh, and then two units of armored squig hoppers. So very similar to normal squig hoppers, but with 60 points of armor and how much anti-infantry? Okay, that's significant. They're also immune to psychology. Okay, those are pretty cool. Those seem all right. They seem better than super squigs anyway. Do we want to kick anything out of any armies and like get those guys running immediately? It does feel like Azhag's army would benefit thematically from having a wyvern. Does he have any buffs for wyverns? I don't think he does. No. Okay. Well, that's a shame and he totally should. It would be very thematically appropriate, but what are you going to do? He's powerful enough as it is, honestly. Uh, I think I might just have him sit and do the same thing. Or no, Wasumpa One Finger is is done recruiting now, so we're gonna we're gonna move up actually. Uh, first things first, let's attempt to block this army again. Okay, cool. So their movement is really screwed up for a turn or two. It's good news for us. Uh, why don't you grab a little bit of melee defense? I guess is the next the next thing we would want if we were to actually put him into battle. Waz Humpa can move as far as Eshin. Yeah, I think I might do that. I think we might have him march to Eshin, and then have Azhag ambush in front of Eshin. In the hopes of in the hopes of catching Volkmar trying to 1v1 what he might perceive as a more killable army. I mean, you know, there's a lot of a lot of units in this army that are less impressive. Uh, and with 40 scrap, I think I'm just going to hold off. We'll, we'll save up for a scrap upgrade on a better unit. Do you want to try to wound this guy? Never mind. You could not. You could not do it even in your wildest dreams. That army is in uh, is in alert mode because they just got hit with a thing. Alright, so you just run around, keep doing stuff, keep gaining levels. Uh, oh, we should take Specialist. We are definitely going to need more success chance. Uh, it's also important to remember that a big part of your success chance at actions comes from the traits you get for doing those actions a lot. So, it's just, it's always going to be the case that new heroes are really bad and we have to train them up through experience. Probably not a foreign concept to people who have played some video games. So, good scouting. We do know that they have Boris Quaid coming in. Very bad army. Just terrible. Actually actually worse than that rebel army we just killed, somehow. Uh, we are about to have a huge problem in Jufbar, so probably we should uh, we, we should probably remove this and get a, uh, a boss's tent up so that we don't have this problem consistently. But, I mean, whatever. We'll spawn a rebel army and then we'll go, we'll go kill them at some point in the near future. It won't be a big deal. This is a critical upgrade. Get me even more money. Always even more money. And then we have our man on the way back. Yeah, like, as the Chaos Tide actually sweeps into uh, Reikland territory, I'm expecting that we will not see any pressure on that area of the map at all anymore. And so I have, I have great hope. I have great hope for this campaign once we can get all of our armies into position here. If they don't do something pretty drastic this turn, we're going to be in a position to uh, put up two full stacks pretty easily against anywhere that we need to while also having another army somewhere that's capable of doing something else which gives us a lot of ability to harm them and then obviously uh if we ever make it provided we eventually make it to our next log uh we'll be in a great position in terms of number of units okay that's a just a just bad play don't know why you would do that that way is he now going to decide to take it or nope he's gonna run deeper into okay and he didn't move Volkmar's army at all. Interesting. Well, Oglok is still pretty far north. Uh, why are... 
Why is that Chaos Army turning around? There's nothing for them up there. Ugh, it's just, just so that they can make my life harder. You guys, the cowardice. Just go, just go fight somebody. Just go fight some Reichlanders. Absolutely not. Never. And not in a million years. Alright, so in order to make use of... Oh, the Brayherds come. Out of the forest they emerge. The horned beasts that stand upright in a not-my-problem. Uh, mission issued. Raid, raise or sack a Reichland thing for some free stuff. Okay. 750 free gold. All of our garrisons were assaulted successfully because they have 10,000 agents. Not a big deal. Oh, interesting. Orcish rebels. I was kind of expecting them to be a dwarven rebel army just because it's it's a dwarf hold, but... Okay, whatever. Uh, so... I mean, there's no reason for Oglock to do anything other than keep moving this way. It is a little bit of a shame that we're not going to be able to get in range to actually be a threat to anybody this turn. Will Ozhag be able to reach that? Yes. And Ozhag, Ozhag would trivially kill those guys. I mean, we should probably throw Wazhumpa in there. Eh, I don't really want to run him in that direction. Alright, here. Let's have let's have Ozhag go clean these guys up. They're in march mode and their army is garbage. So this should be a really easy victory. Uh, we'll take the replenishment... Eh, you know what? I'll take the leadership buff. I don't think that our, this army currently has the leadership buff up, and we're going to replenish that all in, in a couple of turns either way. Uh, do I want a march mode? What does his movement range look like? So he'd be able to get on the other side of the river in normal movement mode, so I'm going to be pretty careful here. I don't want to leave myself marching in the open. I think we'll just we'll just stop here. And in fact, what am I bringing in? 463 income? We'll turn this off and we'll have him... We'll have him just replenish from the land here. I have no idea why... I'm not moving the mouse at all, by the way. I have no idea why it's doing that. Stop. Stop. I wanna... Stop. I wanna change my army stance. Okay, apparently we're... <laughs> like I said, I think this build might have some bugs. <laughs> there are some issues. Okay. Yeah, you do that. I'm actually going to have Wazhumpa move down here. We can't attack the rebels this turn, but we can get on the other side of Castle Drakenhof. We just hang out right here. We can kill the rebels next turn before they have a chance to uh, grow their force too much, because I really don't want to have to deal with a full-size thing. And then Oglock does just move down to Essen. Yeah. I think down to, like, right here. So we have a... We have a great big large number of orcs and also a couple of wyverns to convince Volkmar that he should not do the thing he looks intent on doing. Uh, speaking of which, can you just keep him there forever? Uh, like I keep saying, I believe it is the case that that debuff lasts a couple of turns. So I think we, I think we only have to successfully land a block every other turn for his army to, uh, to be stuck. In, in low movement mode, which would be really nice, right? Okay, uh, this... Our success chance being too low on this guy was not a temporary effect. He's just too good at not being murdered. Well, I guess then just, yeah. Keep doing this thing over and over again until we get some levels on you. Alright, uh, Furt... Is this Skaven? Yes, okay. If Mount Squighorn was actually empty, that would have been nice for us. Would have been uh, would have made it nice and easy to uh, nice and easy to complete our province. Unfortunately, that is not on the table, it looks like. Right, so let's get this going, and how much of this obedience stuff is temporary? Not much. I mean part of the problem obviously is just corruption. So yeah, go ahead and uh, we'll build we'll build a pile of shiny stuff, and then one of the other slots here will have to be devoted to a boss tent. Just the way things will have to be. I am confident that we can rebuild Mordheim safely at this point. And hey, Essen might actually get its proper uh, walls up at some point here. That would be fun. 
Uh, let's hold off on the scrap. Do we want to try to talk anybody into anything again? Let's let's take a quick uh, peek at how we're doing with Clan Moors. Has the continued fighting of the Empire improved our opinion with them? Very little, right? We, I think we were trending toward negative 32 before. I mean, we're just going to keep taking hero actions and keep fighting battles, and fingers crossed, things will happen. I do think it's a little strange that we only actually have four points of reputation from War with Reichland, considering that we've... War with Reichland, I guess, is just the state. Military actions against Reichland are the actual battles. Okay. Uh, they don't like that we had cre treaties with Grimgor's Ardboys. You would think that that maybe could go away when the Grimgor's Ardboy fa Ardboys faction goes away, but apparently not. Alright, uh, how about... How about you guys join the war now? They're even weaker than they were before. Uh, no, 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 not that thing. Sorry. Don't declare war. That would be disastrous. Ask them to join my war. Okay. I figured it was probably going to be the same, but as long as we were in there, we may as well try it, right? Alright, let's, um... Let's get that boss tent up. And see what the Reichlanders do. We're kind of, a lot of my plan right now is based on the other AI factions that are around here. Um, that are supposed to be putting pressure on them. And we're just going to keep hoping that that happens. We don't have good vision of the southern part of their empire anymore. So we don't know what Clan Mors is doing down there. We have to hope it's not nothing. It does look like Reichland is gaining, based on the, the balance of power bar there, it does look like they're gaining roughly two full armies worth of troops per turn, which is a little silly, but absolutely a thing that the AI will do. And again, we just have so, so many agents. They are falling back. If we can get into a situation where we can 40-man Castle Templehof and just take the quick auto-resolve victory, I'm, I'm eager to do so. Alright, the Chaos Armies are at least kind of in position now. They're mostly out of my territory, at least. It does feel like we've been waiting an awfully large number of episodes for them to, like, do anything. But maybe. Maybe someday. Alright, for the most part, their actions that actually matter failed. We are, of course, being raided by ourselves and also by many other people. Uh, how is this all going? All right, yeah, we should definitely cap this out. Uh, the amount of obedience we are losing each turn from corruption really sucks, and it needs to stop. Unfortunately, not very much we can do about it at the moment. I do not want to have to run up there and deal with a rebellion, but it looks like we will almost certainly have to. Uh... So we're nowhere near being able to actually attack Castle Temple off. Well, here's one thing we do know for sure that we want to do right now. Uh, let's give you 20 bonus armor. Seems like a pretty good skill point. Alright, let's knock these dudes out. I'm um, frustrated. This is very dumb. Why would why would this rebel army be all black orcs and doom diver catapults? It's only existed for two turns. It can't have recruited these troops that quickly. I mean, it went like it went our way, but that's an annoying rebel army to have to face. Literally not possible for them to have those troops in the amount of time that they have existed. Uh, Alright, you are going to finish off Orc buffs, and we're going to finally start getting some of that Redline stuff going. And then, yeah, I think it I think it makes sense to put some pressure on Castle Templehof here. Uh, Volkmar has so much movement that he can still get past Drakenhof, even from Fort Oberstire, which is a little well, annoying. Uh, let's... I'm going to move you up to Eschen. Let's get defenses going in both of these places. And then uh, we do want the growth. So one of these two armies is going to come around and, and prepare to attack Tempelhof with Wazhampa next turn. The other army actually gets to apply pressure somewhere else. Now we do know that there's a, uh, a Karl Franz army forming up over here. So probably the smart move would be to have whichever army doesn't come down here for this attack 
go way up here and start applying pressure in this area so that we can at least be responsive to crowd friends coming across. In theory, I'll, I'll tell you what, if we were playing Empire and we had half a stack in Norden when the Chaos Invasion happened, all of their armies would have power converged on us. You wouldn't see any of this stuff where like, they're dancing back and forth in positions. and So I'm a little annoyed by that. It should not be the case that we have to worry about this, but it looks like it is. Yeah, I'm just going to have you run like all the way north. You're going to have to be able to respond to that push. And you are going to come down here, and there's not really a fancy way for me to do this. I can't, yeah, I can't set up an ambush or anything. That's fine. We'll just, uh, we'll just be right here. This province is producing 2,000 gold per turn. I mean, his army's going to fill up anyway. There's no, no reason for me to do the raiding thing. Uh, Gouger should continue blocking this army as much as he can, because it's annoying and we should always annoy our opponents. Uh, let's go for Slippery. Huglug is not going to be able to apply a meaningful debuff to that army. Just keep leveling him up. Uh, we probably want to put we, we probably want to get somebody over here right like this this area here is a nexus of recruitment potential and yeah Balthazar Geld is training up in this area very important information to have there are so many chaos armies that are in position to do so much for us we're gonna have to hope that they start actually doing some of it so where do we how do we want to level this area up do i want to try to i really would love to get more time to a point where we could defend it where it could have proper walls it would it would at least exert some positive defensive pressure and then wolfenberg yeah wolfenberg should get this upgraded we are two turns away from being one point of population away from finally maxing this so it feels like that's still uh, it's still going to be a considerable amount of time. All right, and Wazhampa, what do we want to level up with you? We probably want to improve the Black Orcs. So this army is already pretty good anti-infantry, so I think we want to take the bonus versus large on these guys. That's the thing this army has the hardest time with. I really like the way that the scrap system works and that it, it lets you customize the needs of units in a, uh, a more granular way because black orcs in one army are going to going to be more useful in one role and black orcs in another army useful in the other role. I really like a lot it, pretty much everything about the green skin rework is really cool except for the bugs like the movement thing when you're uh, when you have wog back up and all right, so it looks like the Skaven got as far north as the Moot, and uh, Volkmar fell back to take that. So that means that we have a pretty good attack on the castle this turn. And it'll probably take Volkmar a, a full turn of movement to get back over here before he could even retaliate, so we'll have time to replenish, too. Oh, what are they doing? Are they actually trying to mass up to start playing the game? I think they might be. I don't want to get too hopeful here, because we've been disappointed so many times, but... Alright, Crom Peak fell to the dwarves again, which is whatever. We do not really care about that. Uh, I don't really want a whole bunch of Chaos Corruption right now. I mean, like, we need money, but it's... It's not worth it. We're already having problems in so many other areas because of uh, our corruption level. All right, lots of stuff is ready for duty again. Let's take Castle Temple off. Uh, let's have Huglug run over here and just kind of see what the situation looks like. Okay. If you could land a block this turn, it would be lovely. All right, wonderful. So that army is not going to be able to make it back over here anytime soon. You can go back to just annoying these guys for free skill points. Hooray. Causes fear when fighting men. There we go. Super good assault garrison is up. Alright, this makes an attack on Castle Templehof like quite safe. So let's circle up. Let's come at them with as many bodies as possible. 
Uh, do you have all your important spells? No. Let's let's max out sneaky stabbing, and then we'll get the other stuff. I'm the best. All right. I don't think it sh it shouldn't be the case that we need to construct any siege stuff to have a good chance here. Yeah, we'll just take that quick auto resolve victory because we have places to be and things to do. I'm gonna sack it. I think that that's probably not a huge surprise given the amount of money we're looking at there. The Amber Trance. Absorbs leadership from enemies. That's kind of neat. Alright, I'll figure out somebody to hold that scroll. We did have a couple of cool magic items that I didn't have equipped on anybody. Uh, we will be changing that presently. Yeah, you guys can actually occupy it. And Ozhag can just hang out in the area. So let's repair this. We may as well leave this in place as well. Uh, so, what else do we want to build here? Well, I mean, we're going to need a boss's tent, I'm sure. And then it's probably just growth stuff. And I'm going to have you raid. Get the extra replenishment, because we're probably going to need it. So we may as well turn off extortion, if we're not going to make any money this turn, right? Uh, do we want to turn extortion back on here? It's not a huge amount of money. No, I probably, probably want the public order. And in fact, we could turn off extortion in a bunch of places. Especially over the next few turns. So it's probably a good idea to briefly turn it off in these northern territories that are all chaos infected just to reduce the rate of fall. How's Hellpit doing? Okay, Hellpit's surviving. We're three turns away from being able to cap it out. Uh, do you get another? No, we are at the maximum level of the boss's camp, unfortunately. Well, whatever. I'm not going to stress about it too much. So all of those should be fine. We're positive in most other places. We should be maxing that out, though. Uh, do we have... Let's see. We probably don't even want to upgrade the, the growth building at Wolfenburg because we're going to be pulling it fairly soon. Here in Essen, we can totally do it, though. We, we, we sure do need a lot of growth in this region. Especially considering the amount of time that we've held it. Uh, let's max out Eshin first, I guess. Alright, so Oglock needs to get up to this area. I'm not exactly sure where I want to be. I'm going to have him run to, like, here. We'll feel it out from there. Absolutely not. Carl Franz shouldn't be a threat to us this turn. Uh, can you... I guess all you can do is block them. I mean, that would still be significant. So he's actually very... he's built for combat. We did not get a, a proper a proper map action hero here. We can correct a lot of it. Uh, Furt is just going to continue getting us the feeling over here. I want to see exactly what's happening with these armies. And Nubzub, what is your deal? You're only level one. Yeah, I don't know what your deal is. We'll just have you over here and you can help us keep an eye on the Empire. Still no reason to spend uh, metal on Savage Orc stuff. You should take Deadly Blade. Okay. So without Castle Tempelhof, they no longer have a heavily defended um, settlement in the region, which is going to dramatically reduce their ability to, uh, to continue pressing on us. I think we've probably broken them down here. I mean, that's not to say that there's not going to be a lot more fighting and killing. But they're not going to have the control that they used to have anymore. Unless they can get Temple off back from us relatively quickly. Before we have a chance to fortify it ourselves. It's going to be tough with Volkmar being permanently blocked. I'm hoping that Clan Moors has more forces in the area. We know we did just see an, an army leave uh, Karaza Karak last turn headed west. Uh, yeah, so... The Tomb Kings, the Camry forces, generally have this power is everything modifier. So the size of your empire applies as a negative modifier to almost all diplomatic uh, interactions. People see that you are great and powerful and they fear that you are trying to win the game and they want to stop you. For the Camry, power is everything makes your great power modifier a positive. So as you get bigger and stronger, the Camry get friendlier and friendlier. And it's frankly just a wonderful thing. Could we maybe do even a little bit better than this? 
Uh, in addition to that, I would love it if you would cough up some gold. Likelihood of success, low. How about, how about, like, 1,300? Okay, well, let's, we'll skip the gold. I'll just take all this stuff. So that's going to have us trending towards some very, very positive number. And Clan Moors is currently friends with the Kemri, so the more treaties we have in place with the Kemri, the more Clan Moors will like us, the more likely we'll be able to get a non-aggression pact out of them. And if we can, uh, if we can get some good focus going. Wow, did they manage to lose? Wasn't that a 10-unit army? How did Chaos lose a whole stack to a 10-unit army? Chaos forces are, like, actually pretty badass. I, something's going on with Reichland. I, I'm not prepared to declare that they're definitely broken, but it feels like something about their troops is broken and that they're just, like, way more powerful than they are supposed to be. Alright, well, obviously we're just going to keep rampaging here. Uh, let's see if we can re-block these dudes. Alright, cool. So we are going to be in a position to uh, actually raid uh, Sterland pretty soon. We're going to be able to actually move uh, Ozhag's last legendary item quest forward. I mean, is there any reason not to just have double up on Fort Oberstire? I mean, obviously we could split up and try to cover ground more effectively. But I want to make sure that we're traveling together for the purpose of not getting ourselves ambushed. Let's have you run over here. Okay, nothing. I'm gonna I'm gonna keep us together. We'll have Waz Humpa. Um, actually, I'll have Azhag support. Waz Humpa can take the lead here so that he can get more XP. I don't actually know if that's how that works, but it might be how it works. I uh, yeah, go ahead and sack it first. Why not? We make so, so much money from sacking things. It's really, really hard to justify not doing it. Uh, let's get some defenses up here. We'll just keep creeping that wall forward. And then... Night Shroud? Yeah, I mean, we should get it, I guess. It doesn't seem useful. But we should definitely get it. Oh no, sorry, he can get his boar. He should absolutely take his boar as early as possible. I guess that particular army doesn't really need more um, more cavalry, but still, he's very effective with it. Okay, 16 turns, really? And this would only add 10 growth? Yeah, from 30 to 40. So it would take us from 120 to 130. It would reduce the number of turns, but probably only by, like, a couple. That said, it is only 1,500 gold. Yeah, all right, fine, finish it. I was not going to finish it, but I didn't realize exactly how much growth we were going to need for that last point. Well, we can try to have this army come down and pressure her gig, but I suppose it would be better for me to move along the North Shore and take Norden if I can. It'd be really nice to um, finish the province, right, and be able to take the the commandment. So we'll creep up the uh, creep up the road here. Try to stay in the forest for the better ambush chance. In this case, I think there's there's very little chance that Carl Franz leaves Norden headed this way. But I I don't want him to think there's a reason for him to run away either. I want him to stay right there. Uh, yeah, you... Oops, that's not what I wanted. I wanted to click on the flag. You just hang out over here and keep trying stuff. When I get God, you really get very limited movement through these mountain passes. So it looks like the gates of Mount Gunbad are on fire, but there's nobody actually here. So they probably fought a battle against the dwarves recently. Uh, we can see Hubas... Who hopefully will go and, and fight Balthazar Gelt, although apparently we would we should expect him to lose, which is a little silly. Uh, Nagenhof is less of a priority than Bakafin for sure. And no, I guess that's it. So are these guys still rated as Yeah, they're still rated as way more powerful than us now. I don't know exactly what they've done to recruit so quickly or where all of those armies are. But it's, you know, it's certainly a concern. 
I really thought... It seems like Chaos is not trying. Chaos is way... They're way more effective at this concerted push thing when they're concertedly pushing against you. It may well be the case that um, the, the AI very clearly prefers to target the player in most circumstances. So it may well be the case that they're more effective when they're targeting you because all of their armies are focused on a single goal. But when they're not targeting you, they have like a lot of different competing goals. And so they're sort of spreading themselves out over a lot of concerns internally. Uh, I do like to have friends and you're training with Clan Moors, so probably we can get some friendship with them off of this. Really desperately hoping to make some friends here. Did he? Yep, he did successfully wound Nubzub. Gelt is running in the correct direction to have a collision with Chaos. Unfortunately, we can't uh, have any idea what's going on up there. Let's just hope that the Chaos Forces kill them so violently that we see body parts flying up over the tree line. So otherwise, <laughs> otherwise, we'll never know what happened. I have no idea what's going on with these Beastmen of Chaos Armies, why they keep doubling back. In theory, they should be basically pursuing the Chaos Warriors. Alright, Oglock has gotten even better at ambushes, if you can imagine such a thing. Defeat Carl Friends in battle to get leadership. Okay, I'll do it. Twist my arm, you talked me into it. Uh, can we do it this turn? We sure can. Uh, look, actually, it's pretty close to the edge of our movement range. I think we can. Uh, so you have everything outside of the blue lines now. Yeah, it's close. Nope, there's a little bit of red in that arrow. So I guess what we will do is continue to creep up in a sneaky way. That's a bummer, though, that we we just barely couldn't make it. Alright, do we want to take the move? We can take Volkmar. He's pinned in place. He has no, uh, no backup. Let's have Gouger step out beyond... Just trying to verify that there are no other armies in the area that are going to show up out of nowhere and murder me. You might be able to figure out where Gelt went. Okay, so Gelt's going to press Mordheim probably, which realistically we can't do much about. What was the region? Was it the Moot that I had to... Yes, okay. Well, we can certainly do that. So let's have Wasampa move up to support. We'll have we'll have Azag lead the attack here because we got to take this a little bit more seriously. Let's put in the better units. Some of these um, some of these big units are really just taking, like getting absolutely brutalized every single battle. Uh, there's not really a sense in sacking this. Let's just go ahead and we'll take the loot and occupy for the uh, for the life. Okay, quest aborted. That's interesting. The region still exists. I was just going to raid it, like, right now, after... Okay, well, I guess we'll see. It'll give us a new quest for that step, I think. Rather than just making the quest impossible, because... Uh, boy, I sure hope that's how it works. <laughs> that it will just give you something new to do. But it really shouldn't have cancelled that. Like, we absolutely could just raid it now. I don't know why it felt the need to, to kill that. All right, you're going to press up further north, just to get more of an idea of where the Empire's stuff is. Okay, so we have a little bit of a military um, building up over here. That's not a cheap army. My guess is we're going to see um, Jufbar and, and the Bloody Spears go back and forth over Grand Peak over and over again until we step in and end it. Which we will do. Soon. Uh, this is getting to be a real problem up here. Yep, Prague should probably get upgraded as well. Erengrod should absolutely get up upgraded. The, yeah, the moot should probably get repaired. Let's remove this. So we're going to need to... 
We're going to need to go growth and defense in that area. The moot is a province unto itself. All right. Um, so more time's going to get attacked, right? Seems likely. That said, this is only 800 gold. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. Uh, I don't really know what my plan is for dealing with that. Let's get this built. I mean, we definitely wanted to take the moot. That's the thing that that's the thing that mattered. We can have one of these armies, or maybe even both of them, turn around now. I'm, I'm pretty bummed out about that quest becoming uncompletable at the moment when it would have been easiest to complete it. That's, like, profoundly dumb for that to work that way. I guess what we do next will, to some degree, depend on what they give us in, in its place, right? There are so many enemy forces that appear to just be like, or so many other players, I should say, that seem to just be like milling around awkwardly, not doing anything at all. I wish they would show a little, just a tiny bit of the focus and determination that Reichland has shown to just be terrible assholes all of the time forever. And Gelta also refuses to take more time. It's like they think it's cursed or something. Well, we can certainly have somebody fall back to it. Yeah, he's just going to take Essen next turn, because under no circumstances... Listen, no matter what they have to do, they are willing to cheat if they must. Under no circumstances are we allowed to build up the defenses in this area. What did that Chaos Army do? It looked like it just ran over there and completely disappeared. You didn't get... There weren't any of the fireworks that you get when there's a battle. It just disappeared. Did Maybe they went into ambush mode, I guess? They went hidden for no reason in a place where it couldn't possibly matter. Okay, first things first. We know that we want to move this guy. So we know what's going on around Mount Gunbad. This whole area just really sucks to move through. Okay, Waz Humpa. We could turn around and take Needling. The, the way we deal with Balthazar Gelt can just be claiming all the territory behind him and pushing that and pushing back this front as we return to him that's probably a pretty good idea actually uh let's have you be the one who scouts this stuff okay nothing nothing to worry about it looks like you can press this way give me a little bit of a little bit more intel okay looks pretty clean it looks like gelt is the only one around here uh, we might lose the moot again, and I'm fine with it. And no, we've not been given another step for the quest. It just... Oh, checkmark. Wait. But not like checkmark. No, we totally don't have the swords. We just also don't have the... Hmm. Okay, I might... Uh, <laughs> it's possible that I will rewind time a little bit to uh to make that happen it may, it may be the case that when you guys uh open up the next video we're in a slightly different situation because i would go so far as to say that the way that that unfolded was like obviously not intended like clearly a bug and i will uh, i will fix it we will get our fancy swords it will happen uh, i'm gonna have him fall back and grab shorts often and then we'll figure out what are you doing attack We'll figure out everything else later. Uh, yeah, that's a lot of money. Alright, Western Sylvania is ours. Obviously, we take the one, uh, the one true commandment here. Uh, we could probably leave this on money-making building. And honestly, after this turn, it's probably going to be reasonable for us to turn taxation back on in this region. So, are there any reinforcements, like, in Salzenmund? No, there are not. Well, that's very interesting. Right, we'll max this out. Uh, we'll make him come back here and take this if he wants us not to get to build it up at all. And bad news for him, Essen finished its walls the turn before he would have taken it from us. Okay, finally get to max out Hell Pit. I mean, not like it's 
not like it's a super great thing. We don't really care about help hit that much, but it might end up mattering. All right, here we go. Take Norden. This, this army is just Carl Franz. It's not. It's not the case that that Chaos Army did run up here and just have a battle without fireworks and lose to the tiny, tiny. Just like basically find themselves completely unable to fight Carl Franz. Is it? Because like it could be. The way the Empire characters have been behaving in battle, it is theoretically possible for him to kill an infinite number of enemies, right? Uh, we want. What was the stuff that we needed to still buff up? Oh, he has, um... Sorry, he already has Rock Lobber buffs. So, st Sneaky Stabbers is actually the thing I want. Some of his Goblin units could use buffs. Okay. And we get a Commandment here as well. We don't need it as much here, but it'll help. It's a little bit of growth. And once we, uh, once we cap out Wolfenberg, we can actually change to a different Commandment. If you can believe it, finally, we might use one of the other commandments in a place. Uh, so, I guess we're good for the moment. How are we doing on this? We are at 73, so okay, at the, at the beginning of next turn, we'll tip over into Wogmanga. Let's do one more sequence of enemy turns here. And then, uh, if it doesn't give us a new Slash's quest at the beginning of this turn, we will simply, like I said... Rewind time a little bit to make sure that we can actually get that quest finished. It's super dumb that it, that you lose access to the to the raid this thing quest step at the moment when it would be easiest for you to do that. All right, let's see what Gelt does. I'm pretty curious actually. I guess he could just run into Sylvania and attack down there. Okay, he's going to siege Essen, because again, it's very important to the Reichlanders for some reason that I not... No, he turned around. He started to siege Essen, and then he thought better of it. It's very important to them that I not be allowed to develop that area for some reason. Okay, Chaos Army actually doing something. I mean... The, they just won a battle against a six-unit garrison. That's the best they could do. But it's more than nothing. We have to give them that, at least. It is the, it is the smallest thing they could do that counts as more than nothing. A non-aggression pact with some elves. I... Uh, no. What? Who are you? I didn't want to do that for fear that like, they're, they're at war with Chaos, so Chaos would take issue with it. Uh, oh, chapter objective successful, because we needed the money. And, yep, it looks like that it looks like we did just permanently break that quest, so yeah, I'll have to I'll have to go back a little bit and raid the moot properly, which is annoying, but whatever, it's fine. So, I think this is an okay place to call it for today. I think today we really have seen evidence of the thing I was saying at the beginning of the episode. That although we've been fighting over the same cities for a long time, uh, and it looks like we haven't made a ton of progress, we have completely shattered the Empire's like economy and military stability. They're starting to lose ground all over the place. And my guess is, if we can just keep the pressure up and avoid any serious strategic mistakes, we can probably just push this cascade failure all the way to their capital. So, when you come back next time, on Monday, we're going to start that. It's going to be a whole new day for the Greenskins. And we'll see you then.